Hi there, kitties. It's time again for AutoCAD 101. Well, that's a creepy clown. All right. Um, let's start bringing AutoCAD over. Today we're going to look at some um, commands that let us get information from an object. Um, in this case, we've got list, dist, area, and boundary is not one of those, but it's really useful. List is pretty straightforward. It does exactly what it says. If we type list, li is a shortcut. Be nice if I had been in AutoCAD when I did it. AutoCAD uh, li, and I pick on an object. It will tell me that's a line. It's on layer Z and P1. It goes from this point to this point. It's this long. It's this angle, and it's got um, these characteristics. Now let's, and this is my F2. If I was to go line. Oops, line. Let me draw a different one. Line. And I type list on that. Not only will it tell me the, that information, it'll also tell me the x and y distances. And that can be sometimes useful. But it'll tell you if it's like a polyline. Here, let's, let's do polyline real quick. So list on one of the polylines. And it tells you all these different coordinates. I have to hit enter because it's run out of room. Um, so we can use this to find out you know, what layer something's drawn on, how long something is, so much of other stuff. Um, as far as how long something is, the command to do that is dist. D-I is the shortcut. And with distance, you basically pick between two points. You notice it displays it on the screen as well. But if you hit click, it will tell you 1, 9. It will also tell you the what, X and Y um, distances as well. If you're doing 3D, it actually tells you the Z distance. Um, so both of these can be real useful. Um, area. Let's draw a big rectangle. Well, let's make it a polyline so it's got some different shapes in it. And close. At the area command, area basically wants you to pick all the court corners. So you click, click, and it'll start showing in green the area you've selected. Once you've closed it, hit your enter. And it will tell you the area in square inches, and in parentheses the area in square feet, and what the total perimeter was. The reason we're getting area in square inches to start with, remember AutoCAD's thinking in its base units as of an inch. Um, and it has to calculate the feet for us. If you get a civil engineer's drawing, they use decimal feet. If you bring that drawing in as a block into your AutoCAD file, it will be small. It will be 12 times too small because there's 12 inches in a foot. So they're all calculating on basically tenths of the base unit, and we're using, um, you know, inches, which are a twelfth of the base unit. So if you ever get a civil engineer's drawing that's tiny, scale it up 12 times, you'll be fine. One other aspect of area is the object aspect. I could have done this, I could have gone area. And instead of tracing around it, since this is a closed polyline, I could hit O for object. And as long as it's a closed polyline or something similar, it will then tell me, oh, it's this big. So that's always handy. Um, occasionally, it's a good idea to go ahead and trace an area. If it's a real busy room with other little bits, maybe maybe you ought to trace it with a polyline first. But there's an easier way. Because we had... You know, if we had a floor plan that was all lines, we couldn't do the object aspect of it. We'd have to trace it with a polyline first. There is a sneaky solution to this, and that's called boundary. Um, boundary, when you use it, and it, it's going to look a little familiar because it's going to say pick points. Didn't the hatch command call us to ask us to pick points? And yes, it's doing the exact same thing hatch does. When you pick that point in a hatch command, it basically sends out lines in infinite directions and all, all the way around to find the edges. Boundary is doing the same thing. Matter of fact, if you go back to really old AutoCAD, the hatch command was B hatch, which stood for boundary hatch, and it's doing the same thing. In this case, the hatch command doesn't create a polyline around its area when it hatches it, although it can be set to do that. But this command will. Um, so when we pick do this, if we hit um, make sure this says polyline before you start it, the other tab option there is region. Regions are 3D things. Don't worry about those. 
Um, so we want to pick points. What island detection is, let's say we had another little rectangle in here. Um, and we wanted to just get the area of all this stuff. We go, um, that will detect the island. That's also, um, you also have that a button like that in the B hatch command. Um, well, let me show you that real quick. So uh, B hatch, I'm still calling it B hatch. Hatch. Um, and so I just pick, see how it, it, it knows to find those islands already because that's one of your options is island detection. And so that's why. Um, but we can do the same thing with this. Um, to play with these commands today, we're not going to work in assignment seven. I just did that so we had things to play with. We're going to open up one of AutoCAD's sample files and play with it. So go up here to open sample files installed sample files um, we want sheet sets architectural res and wall base in this handout you can see it's your c program files autodesk autodesk 2019 sample sheet sets architectural res blah 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 um, wherever it puts this in your machine it may not be program files it may be somewhere else but that's the directory when you open it, you're going to get this. In a normal office, you don't want to open up a file someone else is right working in because then, which is the current file, right? And so you get this kind of error when that's happening. In this case, they've saved a file with this hot, so you know this is a sample file and you don't save over it. Just hit yes. And immediately go to file, save as, and save it as assignment nine and put it in your directory. Um, now we're going, oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. This is going to be a problem because Boundary's going to find all these things as edges. We don't want this. So we're going to have to freeze all these layers so that they're not in our way. Well, we could come in here to layers and go, oh, there's a lot of layers we're going to have to freeze thaw. Actually, it's even worse than this. If we type layer and hit enter, oops, I had it up already, sorry. Um, you notice here's those layers we were just looking at, but what's this stuff over here? This is actually a filter. They, this is the filtered results. This, that, it, whoops, that is all the layers actually in this drawing. They've created a filter for the first floor architectural, the second floor architectural, some, you know, so just the walls, just, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and that's called a filter. I don't usually mess with these much. The file has it, so I figured I'd mention it to you. I don't know of any offices that use them. Um, you'll also know they're not following. Notice, blah, blah, blah. You'll notice they're not following the AIA structure here. My guess is the this layer structure is probably based on um, the software they're using. Because um, you notice there's a separate layer here for the sinks, for the mirrors, for the door. I mean, it's like, this is stupid. Why don't you have a separate layer for a specific object type? My guess is this is probably generated by something like Revit, a machine, a language like that, or a software like that, and it does this. It has these layers built into the blocks as it brings them in and all this other stuff. I don't know that for certain, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know why you would make a layer for objects. Um, but anyhow, while we're in the layer dialog box, let's create a new layer. We'll make our ZNP1 layer. It's a non-plot layer that happens to be color 105. And we'll click on it to make it hot. Oops. Uh, why don't you want it to be hot? Why? Oh, because it's frozen. Ah, now I can make it hot. Yay, so now it's the current layer. And we'll get that out of the way. Although, if you want to, we can go back to the second floor. Oops. The second floor layers, we just see those. Um, I'll move it over here. Now, at this point, we have to, we could use list. List on this. Oh, find out what layer it is. Come over here and freeze it. List. That would take forever. Um, there's an easier way. Up here, there's a thing called lay freeze. L-A-Y-F-R-Z. Um, the nice thing about lay freeze 
and it commands lay free so it's just l-a-y-f-r-z might be one of those things you want to make your own shortcut command for um command alias the nice thing about this is you pick the object and as long as that's not the current op you know the current drawing layer it will freeze that layer for you very handy huh uh, we're going to freeze a whole lot of stuff where's that that's that mirror um we don't need that um you'll oh we'll get rid of this hatch because that's probably slowing us down too you'll notice that if you get rid of go oops i didn't want to get rid of that layer hit your u for undo don't just stop you want to end up with something similar to this um now as you remembered with boundary if i want to get the area of this room i can't have this opening this is why we made the z non-plot layer we'll use a rectangle rectangles the rectangle command to close up all of these rooms it's also going to turn out that we need to close up some little gaps because the architect didn't do a particularly good job of drawing this file um, like look, we've got these things here so we'll just close that with a line close this one with a line and if you try boundary right now so boundary pick points and we pick in here it'll tell you it can't well I wonder why let's see let's look is there anywhere they didn't connect their corners thanks dudes um, let's go ahead and fix it one of the things I talked about remember those grips these blue squares that show up on things when you get a grip like this if you move the bottom grip Wee, it moves the th object itself we're going to grab that grip and stick it to the corner if you grab the middle grip that's just like using move um but that's okay let's see if we have any other ones that are messed up doesn't look like it we'll have to try boundary again oops there's another oh that's that one i fixed let's try boundary again pick point there we go now we hit enter and on the ZMP1 layer, it's made this polyline. So we can now use area O for object. Pick on that. And look, it tells us what the area is. We're going to do this for all of these rooms. We're also going to do it for the building as a whole. To do that, we'll have to use polyline and trace around the edges. Now to say mess this corner up too. So just walk your polyline around the building. Don't forget that when you get done, up this here, and you're going to go back, you can snap back or you can hit C for close. And so then you can get this area, area O. That is the total gross area of the building, 5,064 feet. Gross area, here we, we just kind of walked what we talked about. Um, the thing about gross area um, is that's the total amount of area in the building with walls, with all this other stuff. Generally, what building owners are interested in is the, yeah, but how many offices and how much stuff can I, you know, basically rent? How, what's my rentable space? Um, that's called the net or the net usable. That does not include stairs, corridors, bathrooms, all that kind of stuff. The net usable in this case will be room 208, 201, and 204. So get their totals for rooms, those rooms, add it together. That's your net area. A lot of times code officials are asked for a lot more than that. They'll ask for, you know, how much is included in the structure. You know, so you have to get all the little structure columns, and, you know, do them. What's the net area? But what's the functional space? What's the circulation space? And there's ratios of where you want to be with these kind of things. Because you don't want to have a whole bunch of circulation space that's not making the building owner money. Unless they're interested in having some grand staircase or something. But anyhow, as a new uh, employee, you'll get volunteered or voluntold to do this kind of stuff. So go ahead and do these. Keep in mind that if when you do boundary... Um, whoops, I wasn't in AutoCAD. If you get one that doesn't find an edge, oh, I found that one. 
Remember, hitting enter will start the command again. Oh, because like most of these are going to work. This one's going to be a little bit off because it's actually going to go around the partitions. But the partitions were drawn on the wall layer, so too bad. That's going to be close enough for our purposes. If you're off by a couple square inches, that's no big deal. And then I guess I have the... Oops, I forgot a rectangle here. Here, let's erase this polyline because now it's, I messed it up. Rectangle. I skipped one of the rectangles. Um, so boundary. I could have used the grips to fix this too. And I don't know what this is. I don't know if there's an opening here or not. Um, so when it does the... Oh, it found an open somewhere. That one didn't work. Let's go find out. It's got an opening somewhere. Let's do boundary again. Maybe it's just because it wasn't all on the screen. One time, one thing you'll see is when you're trying to hatch and stuff, a lot of times if it edges off the screen, it won't work. Yes, there we go. That's what it was. And here, it's how it went around all these things. We really don't want that. What we can do, let's start boundary again. Let's turn our island detection off. And now hit our pick point. That's better. Let's add a couple. Yeah, we're probably going to have to just do this one by hand because the stairs are there. We might be able to freeze that layer. Let's try our lay freeze. Yay! Okay, now we do fine. Um, so boundary. Pick our point. Yay, that worked. But you get the idea. Do all these. Add your numbers up. Write down what with each of the room numbers. Write down what the area is for each. And the gross, which is this one, and then the net, which is 201, 204, and 208 added together.